What's going on, wrestling fans? It is I, Steve Fall, and welcome to 10 Count right here on Wrestling News Coat. On today's edition, I am talking to, unfortunately, the former NWA Women Champion. It's Camille. I'm sorry for that intro. Camille, how are you doing today? No, I'm great. Hey, it's the first time it's been said, so you got the honors of of doing that former first. So congrats. Congrats to you, Steve. No, it's okay. It's it's, it's all good. It had had to happen eventually, Steve. All right. I just want to make sure. I, I, you know, it's like saying something mean to someone with a backhand compliment. <laughs> I, I don't want to be a mean person here, but today we have to talk about that as well. But you were NWA Women's Champion for over 800 days. Now, do you feel like the championship after such a long, long run was the perfect time as your character on television to lose it to kind of have a, you know, passing the torch moment? On NWA 75. Yeah, absolutely. Um, It was about, I want to say it was after Nuff said, which I think was like in February. Um, I was talking to Pat Kinney on the phone about like a reimbursement or something random. You know what I mean? And um, and I just said, Pat, it's time for me to to lose the title. (laughs) I'm just like, it's time. Um, It, you know, I, I, I went through almost every girl in the division um i've i've had it for at that point it was almost about to hit the the two year mark um i was like i feel like i'm as over as i'm going to be as a champion you know what i mean and i mean and i was just like it's time to to highlight someone else and get someone else over and um i i did say um at that time, I, I was like, and I feel like I really want it to be Kinsey. I said, I, I think Kinsey is next. Um, she's been sort of, obviously, she wrestled before the NWA, uh, obviously, but but this was the first company she's ever been signed to. She's sort of an NWA, like, homegrown talent. And, like, little fun fact, she was my first title defense with my championship reign. So I was like, what better, like, little, you know, nugget um, than that? And um, and, you know, so I just, I just put that out there and, um, I said, I said, and then I just, I feel like the people, uh, the NWA fans that they need a break from me for a little bit. Cause it, it just, it, it's, they just need a little break from me. They need, I need to kind of refresh, regroup, figure something else out because I mean, eventually things get, um, you know, I don't know if like complacent is the word, but it just, it, it's like, oh, okay. And then too, it almost, be, you know, I think we've talked about this before. It, it almost becomes, sorry, the washing machine's going off in the background. <laughs> the doo, 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 I'm done. Um, it, it becomes a point where it, I feel almost like people going into the matches are like, oh, well, she's going to win. She's going to win, you know? And so I was just like, it was time. I just, plain and simple, it was time. And I couldn't be more than happy that I got to pass it to Kenzie Page. I do wish that, um, cause you know, I said that back in like five, like seven months ago, I do wish we had a little, um, better of a, of a story leading into it. Um, because about that point to me and Markova, we hadn't even, uh, touched, um, for a match. And so, you know, fast forward to NWA 75, that was our third title match against each other. So like, uh, I do think it could like Markova or Kinsey, either one would have been great, great to take my place. I mean, Markova is a freaking ass kicker and she's, if she would have won it, she would have earned every, every bit of that as well. And we had a great um, story, just, you know, feud going into that. So um, I kind of wish that me and Kinsey would have had, you know, that going into it, but Kinsey had a great comeback story that night. She lost her TV title, then entered herself into the gauntlet to overcome all the girls because she started in the beginning and win. So, I mean, either way, I feel like it was a a great outcome. Yeah, especially the fact that you brought it up where sometimes you order a pay-per-view and these are the matches you're going to get. You know what you're going to get. But when there's a surprise, that gives you more incentive to go, well, I missed that. I got to tune in next time they have a pay-per-view or next time they have an event on Tuesdays. I need to tune in to see this because you never know what's going to happen when you watch NWA or any company, really, when they surprise you like that. So having you lose, very sad for me, but obviously (laughs) good for uh, Kenzie and other people involved. But when you did lose, 
There was a reaction online that was not surprising to me at all. <laughs> but it, it seemed to you when we were talking that you said, I can't believe how much support there is out there for me. And it wasn't just from the fans who watch NWA. It was people who don't watch NWA. It was from former wrestlers. It was from current wrestlers. How did you feel about seeing that? Because Twitter can be an evil place, <laughs> but also it can be so uplifting. Yeah, uh, I mean, you said it. Even when you have a freaking uh, baby, even you talk about it right there, I feel like I want to tear up. <laughs> um just because, like, um, you, uh, sorry, I feel like a ding dong, but it's just like um, my whole run. I feel like it was uh, a lot of times uh, overshadowed by negative sh- crap and just so much shit that had nothing to do with me <laughs> online. And it's just like, man, fuck. I just, I I'll, like, I'm putting in all this hard work. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm killing every match. I'm, I'm putting together a match where like my opponent gets over even when they lose and I, I get over and it's just, like, I just felt like I was really kicking ass at my job. Right. <laughs> and, but like, I just felt like it was like fruitless almost like, you know, I just, um, but like, like you said, to see, like, I mean, I literally think I seen like maybe like two quote unquote, like mean comments out of, a fucking sorry a freaking swear ton and i was like whoa like i was like so people do they have either if they haven't seen my work they've heard about it they've heard that like you know if you're not gonna look at anything else in the nwa make sure you check out camille because she's she's really holding it down over there and i don't know it like it's it's a you know they say when you are at work and it's like, yeah, you make a lot of money or whatever. Not saying I do, but you look like any job, they say. But sometimes just that, um, that pat on the back, that recognition is means more than like any amount of money you can make. And like in that moment, I really felt that it was like, oh, like I don't ask for a lot, and it was just like getting that. It was almost it was just like relief. I felt like you know, like it did. Like even though the whole two years, I felt like it wasn't paying. <laughs> In that moment, I was like, you know what? No, it did pay off. People did recognize my growth, um, my loyalty to the company, my wanting to get the younger girls over in any way I could. Like in that moment, I felt appreciated. And that's like all I could ask for. (laughs) That's good to hear. That is good to hear because, yes, there has been. Uh, each company obviously has it where you have an amazing event and then something terrible happened backstage that overshadows <laughs> anything yeah. that the company did for this great event. And it happens yeah. not just with uh, WWE, AEW, NWA, Impact. It happens to everybody with any company, even if you work at any, if you work at McDonald's, you had the great weekend at McDonald's. Well, guess what? Someone might have said something terrible and that's all we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But those weird ass Grimace commercials I kept seeing with people. <laughs> Weird stuff. But seriously, you know, you've earned the pat on the back more so than ever. And let's talk about that for a second, because for two years, you said you're putting in all this hard work. And yet there are moments that no one's talking about you. But the thing is, though, I'm talking to a lot of people in wrestling media and fans in general, and they always bring up your name. But then that name was never brought up, say, online. Like it it was never talked about on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. So now that it's happened, you had one of the most impressive title reigns in professional wrestling in general, because look at the runs people have been having. People have been going over 800 days recently, but yet women, you know, not so much here and there in different companies, but with you, how do you feel about that? Because your reign again, over 800 days, that is not a small feat. I interviewed jazz recently and she put you over big time. She's at 900 something days. So she's definitely beat you in the title. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she had all these good words to say about you because of your title run. How do you feel about that? Because that has got to be a great thing on your resume to say, I held this belt. The fabulous Moolah held this belt. Jazz held this belt. And now you are in that run of being like the top five longest running NWA women's champions of all time. I know you said it is it's just funny how it kind of kept like escalating and escalating because like when I first got the title um, my goal in my head I was like it would be so cool to have it for a year I was like you know that is that is huge like to have a belt for a year Um, I was like and that would give me time to like grow into being a champion and you know 
really prove myself. And so once I hit the year, I, I don't want to say I didn't care because obviously I care, but then I was like, okay, whatever happens, happens. And, um, you know, then it just kept going and going. And then, then I got to the point, like you said, um, this was pretty recently actually where I, um, I passed June buyers for that number five spot. And so I was like, like I etched my name in literal history by being in the top five. I mean, that belt has been ha a thing since 1948. <laughs> right. So that's, I mean, it's a big deal. And um, I think that some people, what they don't, cause I mean, we're on this podcast here. We understand wrestling. It's, we understand the scripted. We understand all that. Right. Yeah. But it's still entertainment. Okay. And people might think, Oh, well it's scripted. Who cares? You didn't really like, who cares about that rain? But the thing is, if I wasn't constantly producing championship match after championship match that really was entertaining and really kept people on the edge of their seats and stuff like that, I wouldn't have been the champion for so long. It's I, I was a champion for that long because one, yes, it's, it's a scripted event, but two, I earned that right. I don't know if that's the word to be a champion that long because I showed I'm the right person to have it. I'm the right person to even in defeat when people were defeated by me, elevated them. Uh, like, you know, the young girls that had matches with me and stuff like that. So it was just nice. I feel like the, um, the first year of my reign was all about improving, improving, prove yourself, prove yourself, prove yourself, like keep up in the game and prove yourself. And then after that year, I feel like it was like, okay, that's when I was like, the face of the NWA, the face of the women's division, the champion, and now everyone has to come through me, you know, type of deal. So I think the second, first year was proving myself. The second year was showing out and and people just coming up to bat and seeing if they could hit a homer with me. You know what I mean? Of course. Of course. And again, you did a great job, you know. But you've achieved so much in NWA. Have you decided – at any point to go challenge yourself elsewhere, WWE, AEW, New Japan, Mexico. There's so many places right now. Wrestling is on a boom right now. Is there somewhere that you're looking? Is there a challenge out there that you want to achieve? Yeah, definitely. It kind of goes back to what I just said. Like first year of being a champion, all about proving myself, right? Second year of my reign was when I started. And I think the fans started to recognize my um my abilities what i can do what i can offer and um that's when you know you start realizing like yeah i i i have really grown to this position where i would be a um oh i'm thinking about a relationship like a good catch like <laughs> i mean a good catch for anybody <laughs> but um you know a good acquisition for any company to have um to use me in whichever way they choose and i I have built that through the NWA and like, I'm very grateful for that, that confidence to know I can, I can do well anywhere. Yeah. The, the, the highest of high leagues are on an indie show in the, at an armory. You know what I'm saying? Like I have that talent to be able to make that happen. And, um, you know, unfortunately that whole year you get comments all the time, like, uh, go here, go here, go here. Well, everybody, there is something called a contract. And what? I know, What's a contract? I <laughs> and so, like, I think that people, I don't know if they forget it or they just, you know, fantasy book in their heads or whatever. But, you know, I, I, I have been under contract. Um, and that's that's that. So, um, but when it comes to going somewhere else, challenging myself, I think you said it perfectly, It you know, challenging myself somewhere else i've been with the nwa for five years now in october it will literally be exactly five years and um I'm 30 years old i think that if there is a time to take a risk and bet on myself now's the time can you say how much time is left in your contract no i can't say how much time all right you know, <laughs> you know i had to ask yes of course, of course. <laughs> you know how the game works right uh, yes i got you steve <laughs> don't don't hate the player hate yeah the game. 
No, never had the game. I got your seat. <laughs> All right, man. Just want to make sure. Uh, I did mention Jazz earlier, though, and how does it feel having someone like that? Because I interviewed her, and I asked her about her position in the WWE beforehand, and she brought up very good points about Trish Stratus and Lita, and that was her, those were her words. But she praised you. And how does that feel knowing that someone like her, because she's the first ever a black woman to go into WrestleMania as a champion and retain the championship. That's history in the making. She's done so many firsts and having her praise you. How does that make you feel? Yeah. First of all, and I've said this in a many an interview when they ask about the backstage thing, jazz does not get the credit she deserves period point blank period. I don't know how, I don't know what's up with that, but jazzy straight down the camera, you know that we all love you and we respect you and think you're a badass woman. So, you know, the, the people that, like, matter, uh, you know, like, the people that know her, knows what she's done, we, we get it. We get the jazz laid, the especially for women like me, like, a big, strong woman. Like, she laid that groundwork that you can be badass, you know, you can be a badass woman and respected. And um, for jazz to say that, it's um, it's just so special because jazz was literally there when I was the insurance policy, not even talking. Right. She was there when I had my first couple matches where I was like, what the hell do I do? <laughs> so, you know, and I'd go and I've talked with her, with her. And um, I remember she actually talked to me about like working Trish and, you know, you know, le leading the way for Trish and like helping her out in the ring. And that's what I needed at that point. And, you know, just stuff like that. And so she's watched me grow from really like needing someone to lead me in the ring to like, being like equal and now I can lead others in the ring and like she's seen that whole transformation and like I call her mama jazz I'm like you're my you're my wrestling mama like she knows this so and it's just nice to even like at this last set of tapings like we don't talk wrestling all the time we were sitting there talking about our families last and you know just life and um yeah. it's just wonderful to have someone there that um you feel like you can talk to you feel like you can turn to you feel like you can trust and so I got same right back to jazz I got nothing but good things to say about jazz <laughs> Yeah, she uh, she is one of the best going, and we had a great conversation. It is on Wrestling News Co.'s YouTube channel right now where, boy, oh, boy, did she share her true feelings on Trish Stratus, and uh, they weren't negative. It was just honest, and I believe every word she said, and so check that out right now if you're interested in hearing her words, praising you, and, of course, we went through a career retrospective of everything she's done from ECW to NWA to WWE, so it was a great conversation, but... Right now, though, I'm also having a great conversation with you, and it seems like Hollywood is knocking on the door for you <laughs> because you recently posted on Twitter, maybe a couple months ago now, where you said you're starring in a movie. Now, I know there's a strike going on right now, so we can't talk about every inch of this, but can you give me the cliff notes of who reached out to who, how did this happen, and what is the movie about? Okay, so I have to. I I can really barely give you cliff notes because I can't. I, it's I'll be looked at as a scab. I believe oh. they call it if I am um, promoting the movie. But when I when I am allowed to promote and talk about it, Steve, me and you will be the first ones to do an interview. I'll talk all about the movie. Um, but I can. I think it's totally fine to say that um, was very unexpected really freaking crazy how it happened basically i think this is, i think this is fine to say basically um i sit in because they were filming in louisville which is not too like three hours from where i live um taryn terrell uh, my, my friend taryn she um she does some stunt work and like her husband's and stunts and stuff i just sent in my pictures for stunt work and then i can't get into more specifics than that but pictures for stunt work turned into somehow i think i might be the first person ever to to have that big of a role without having a headshot. So, <laughs> um, but you know, I, I, I'm on set with some very well-known people in the, um, the bit, the, the acting industry and, um, them just saying to me, like, you are, the, you're natural at this. Like you need, I can't believe this is your first movie. Like you have, you, you gotta, you gotta do something with this. Uh, I was like, Okay, they well, <laughs> you know, I was like, they know that I, I haven't seen it. I don't know what the hell I did. I just tried my best. You know what I mean? So I was like, I was like, um, I'll listen to them. They know what they're talking about. I mean, freaking Clint Eastwood's daughter over there, you know, she's, I was like, if she gives me the, the check of approval, then I'm going with it. So 
uh, yeah, I've got now representation on the East Coast. I have meetings um, in a few weeks for representation on the West Coast. And who my knows? God. My who God. Knows what will Everything's going up for you, it seems, in the <laughs> wrestling world and in Hollywood as well. And I saw Jim Ross praise you as well, saying he enjoyed your work in this film. Obviously, we can't talk about it further than that. But all I have to say is the voice of professional wrestling for a lot of us, Jim Ross, praising you on your acting skills. Uh, you know, you'd think it'd be Jim Ross saying, hey, great match. No, he's like, yeah. hey, great job being in this movie. Like, uh, oh, does he really what's happening here? But again, it's great to see that he was praising you as well. But what is next for you? What's what's happening? Because I know NWA, as we're talking right now, posted on Twitter that they are upgrading their facilities, uh, new lighting, new cameras. I know Impact Wrestling is doing the same exact thing. So a lot of people are investing in themselves to expand. So where do you stand with NWA with anyone right now? Yeah. Um, I saw that as well, an article that came out and I hope that, you know, it gets people excited about what's to come for the NWA. I know Billy's putting a lot of his own, obviously time and money into uh kind of a new, you know, they're calling it the new era, uh, of, of NWA. And, uh, I really hope that, uh, that, that investment that he's putting into like the production, there's something else that's, um, big on the horizon that I cannot say, um, but I know that he's been uh, excited about that for a while. And I really hope that it does bring a lot of eyes to the product and really grows the NWA. Um, and as far as me, um, I just think that, you know, I've done all I can and proven all I can prove in the NWA, uh, at least as a, as a singles competitor. Um, so we'll see, you know, what happens from there, how my character can evolve. Maybe I'll join a tag team. Who knows? Um, but as a singles competitor in the NWA, I, at least for a long while, have nothing left to prove. So, um, yeah, we'll just have to see where this wrestling life, Hollywood life, who knows, takes me. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, this is so much happening. And I off the top, I called you former world champion, but technically you're still always a champion. So you are not the current reign defending champion, but you did hold that belt for a hundred days. So you know what? Well, you're not former to me. You're a forever champion to me. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, I want to say it's an honor and a privilege again to talk to you right here on Tank Count. I feel like there should be a punch card for me and you. Every time we do an interview, I eventually there should be a free sub at the end of some sort. Like every I'm time. I'm down for a sub. I'm down for a sub. I'll buy you a sub. You know, I think it right. might be the fourth or fifth time we've <laughs> talked. So I think Drew McIntyre might be tied with you right now in interviews with me. So that's good company, to, in my opinion. So hey, that's my that's my hubby's friend. So that's yeah, I'm I'm fine with that. Cool. <laughs> Cool. Well, I cannot wait to see what happens next with you in Hollywood, in wrestling in general. But again, 800 days as and over 800 days as NWA champion. Let me correct myself before people attack me and tell me <laughs> the exact date and yell at me and send me hate mail. Which, which, ha which happens? It happens. It, 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 it goes with it, the territories, dude. You know, you, you ask a question. Some people might like you. Some people might hate you. It doesn't matter. Yeah. All I know is. <laughs> All I know is that I got to talk to you one more time, and it has been an honor and a privilege again right here on 10 Count to talk to you current, no longer, but still forever, NWA <laughs> Women's Champion in my heart. I've been Steve Fall. She's Camille. Have a great day, and we will see you next time. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.